Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to 32 Manias with Mike. And no, this title is not deceiving. We're at WrestleMania 32 last year, last podcast. But we, we did it. We did it, you guys. 32 WrestleManias, 32 days. Um, before I before I start WrestleMania 32, if if any of you have watched all 32 of these videos, including this one, thank you so much. Um, it's a lot of wrestling. <laughs> it's a whole lot. I'm sure you guys know, but um, but thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun going back in history. But enough of that bullshit. Let's get to why we're here. WrestleMania 32, last year. How much did I remember? How much did I not? I didn't remember a ton of it. I remembered a few things, but ooh, it's it's it doesn't hold up as well as you'd like to think, and it's only been a year. So um, let's start with the pre-show as we do. This pre-show's got three matches on it. Uh, the first one was for the U.S. title match, Kalisto. I didn't even remember he was a U.S. champion. Uh, where you been, Kalisto? Sorry, buddy. He uh, beat Ryback. This is probably Ryback's last, definitely last Mania match. Might have been his last match. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Kalisto beat Ryback on the pre-show for the US title. I still don't remember who beat Kalisto. Was it Miz? Was it Ziggler? Maybe? Maybe Ziggler? I don't know. It, it seems like forever ago since Kalisto was actually important. It's a shame. Uh, but anyway... Let's move on. There's a 10 Diva tag team match. You got Team Total Divas. Brie Bella in her last match. Paige in her last Mania match. Natty, Alicia Fox, and Eva Marie also probably in her last Mania match. Wow. Um, they, they went up against Team Bad and Blonde. Uh, that's Naomi, Tamina. That, that's the Team Bad portion of this. And the Blonde part is Lana in her first ever match, Emma, and Summer Rae. And, um, of course, if you guys have watched Total Divas at all, you know Brie Bell is winning this with the Yes Lock because it's her last match. But it was it was a good match from what I remember. I, uh, as, as I've said, I did not watch the pre-shows again because the pre-shows... I, I didn't want to skip to the matches of the pre-show. I wanted to just keep it WrestleMania proper. But I do remember the pre-show being quite good. Uh, they showed a little bit of a highlight reel on the show itself. So I got to see some of the highlights. But uh, they also had a, 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 nice, a nice tag match. I thought this was a tag team tables match based on the clip they showed in the, uh, in the rundown at the end of the show. But it wasn't. It was just the Usos versus the Dudley Boys. And the Usos beat the Dudley Boys and then splashed them both through tables. I think that might be the last we've seen of the Dudley Boys. I think I think this might have been their swan song because I don't remember them being around after Mania, but uh, yeah, Dudley Boys had a good run, a good uh, good you know put people over run. So now let us get to WrestleMania 32 proper. Oh guys, we open up with a hot one, ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Dolph Ziggler, Stardust, The Miz, Sin Cara, and Zack Ryder. Supposed to be Neville. Neville got injured. I think it actually. I think. I don't know if hindsight's twenty twenty on this. If this worked out for Neville in the long run, but he is the cruiserweight champion now. He's he's going to be defending against Austin Aries. So I mean, you know, ne Neville's okay. I think Neville's okay missing this match. But what a match this was, guys! This match was really really fun. Uh, yeah, a lot of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn stuff on there. You had Stardust pulling out a polka dot liar. Rest in peace, Dusty. Um, he had some good Miz and Dolph Ziggler stuff. Sin Cara broke out a few nice moves. Um, this was back when Sin Cara was trying to do things. But, you guys, no one called this. No one. Zack Ryder wins the Air Connell Championship. Woo, woo, woo. You fucking know it. Good on you. Really cool WrestleMania moment. Um, you can just see the... Because, I mean, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, they will have WrestleMania moments to come. Dolph Ziggler kind of had his WrestleMania moment the night after. Stardust, 
probably won't ever get a WrestleMania moment. Miz definitely has a WrestleMania moment easily. Sin Cara, I don't think he ever expected to get a WrestleMania moment. But Zack Ryder kind of earned one. He's been around a long time. I mean, remember when the Undertaker fought Edge? Yeah, Zack Ryder interfered in that match. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. That was that was a major brother time ago. Uh, but yeah, good on Zack Ryder. And actually, if you watch the WWE 24 um, documentary that they have on the network about this WrestleMania, they have Zack Ryder getting his picture with uh, Scott Hall backstage because Zack Ryder was at WrestleMania 10 where Scott Hall beat Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental title in a ladder match. And Zack Ryder went backstage, got a picture of Scott Hall then, and he was holding Scott Hall's IC belt, and now Scott Hall is holding Zack Ryder's. Very cool. There was also a segment about it later, like a little interview segment. Really, really awesome for Zack Ryder. Very cool moment for him. Um, next match, we have the WrestleMania debut of Mr. Prince of Phenomenal, AJ Styles, going up against... The Ayatollah of Rock and Roll, Chris Jericho. Oh, these guys have a fun match. I mean, it's Jericho and Styles. You know it's going to be good. And, man, they do not disappoint at all. Um, it's it's a longer match, too. It's about it's about 15 minutes. So, you know, pr- pretty decent length. Uh, some of these matches we'll talk about will go a little bit longer. Uh, but, yeah, it was a really good match. Jericho defeats AJ Styles. None of us, I don't think, expected that. I think most of us pretty much thought AJ was going to win his WrestleMania debut, but it's not to be. And sadly, I don't think AJ is going to win this year at WrestleMania, although he might. I don't know. It's actually hard to tell. But um, moving along, we have... I wanted this to be better. It's the League of Nations, Sheamus, Alberto Del Rio, and Rusev with King Barrett in their corner going up against the New Day. Um, of course, New Day had an amazing entrance this WrestleMania. Best entrance of the card. Uh, not that there, not that there was too much. Actually, no. You know what? Not the best entrance. Really, really good entrance. Not the best entrance. In fact, their entrance was immortalized. And uh, no, this is not the T-shirt. This is not the cereal. This is a uh, WWE Elite figure set of their entrance from WrestleMania. Yeah, it doesn't have the Saiyan armor because I don't think they have the rights to that. But um, but yeah, New Day came out in a giant box of bootios. Giant big old box of bootios. They came out dressed as Saiyans. Like Xavier Woods even had a tail. Uh, it was really awesome. Um, and props to Michael Cole for pretending to know what Dragon Ball Z is. Uh, but yeah, uh, they, had, they had a short match. It was fun though. A lot of hard-hitting stuff, and the League of Nations actually get the win here. Although, I have to say, it's a little weird seeing Alberto Del Rio and Xavier Woods fight. That's all I'm going to say about that. But <laughs> it's a little weird. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, it, it was a fun match. Uh, the numbers, the New Day, this is the only time really New Day was hurt by the numbers game because of King Barrett on the outside. It was a bull hammer into a bro kick, basically. That it cost the New Day to lose. But luckily for them, this was not a tag team championship match. Shocker. Uh, so I basically told you League of Nations is probably going to win. All right, uh, moving on. This this is a this is a match that should have been better. Um, the no hold barred streak fight. Brock Lesnar versus Dean Ambrose. I I've seen Dean Ambrose in street fights. Dean Ambrose is very good in street fights. I've seen Brock Lesnar in no DQ matches. Brock Lesnar can be very good in no DQ matches, but for some reason, these two guys just didn't gel. Not sure what it is. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, it it could have been... I, I don't know what it was. I mean, there was a lot of kendo sticks, a lot of chairs. That's basically it. Uh, I would have liked to see some more weapons. Like, I know you can't do too much stuff, but you can have a little bit of fun with it. I mean, I don't know, but Brock Lesnar obviously gets the win because he's Brock Lesnar, obviously. But, and now, um, my personal favorite match on the card is up next. And, uh, you guys, guess what? We do not have divas anymore. We have women's. Fucking wrestlers. Damn straight we do. Uh, 
triple threat match to crown the first WWE Women's Champion. Women's Champion. Ah, oh, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, Charlotte. Sasha Banks, by the way, my favorite entrance is WrestleMania. Snoop Dogg remixing her entrance theme. That is prime celebrity usage. That is also prime live music usage. That's the perfect way to do it. No concerts. Fuck the concerts. Remix the intro. That's all you need to do. And it was great. Um, Charlotte also had a great entrance. I love um, her robe in this. Her robe was made from pieces of the robe that her dad wore when he had his retirement match against Shawn Michaels. Very cool. Very sentimental. They say that in the commentary, but you can tell because it looks exactly like the robe Ric Flair wore. Um, also, kind of a cool note. It's very... I don't know if it was intentional. I assume it was, but um, when Charlotte poses for the last time with the Divas Championship, Flair actually positions himself behind Charlotte so that the camera can get a perfect shot of just Charlotte without Ric Flair in the shot as the pyro's going off. It's re- it's a really, really cool shot, you guys. Uh, they go into the stuff about the robe a little more on uh, the 24, too. Definitely, wa- seriously, the past three WrestleManias, you've got to watch the 24 um, documentaries on them. They will enlighten you and crush you at the same time because you see like a lot of the people who have had like this is their first WrestleMania. They're seeing this stuff for the first time. Like, like, uh, there's a bit with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn backstage, and they're like, "Dude, we did it, man!" Like, like it's very small, very small, very tiny. But if you watch these again, you see the little things. Like, there's stuff with Bailey and Sasha hanging out. Bailey was at Takeover. She was not at WrestleMania, so Bailey is there with Sasha, like one of her good friends. Like. It's awesome. You have to watch these documentaries. They're really, really good. I can't stress that enough. All right. So um, this women's match. Oh, God, it's good. It's really good. I'd say best match on the card. Personal preference. They they go all out. Like it, If you've ever seen any of their NXT work, if you've ever seen any of their current WWE stuff, at least on pay-per-views, or like the Charlotte and Sasha title matches, you know what they can do. This match is amazing. And uh, Charlotte gets the win. Little unexpected. I definitely thought Sasha was going to be the first women's champion. Makes sense to me. But it also makes sense to have your first champion have the last name of Flair. But uh, yeah, really, really good match. Sasha's wearing Eddie Guerrero inspired gear. Like Charlotte did a crazy moonsault to the outside. It, a lot of really fun stuff. Just watch this match. Seriously, watch the ladder match. Watch this match. And you know what? For the fun of it, watch the Battle Royal, too. That, that's Those are the three I would say to watch on this, personally. All right, uh, before we get to the uh, second half of the card, let's go into the Hall of Fame since I talked about Snoop Dogg. Snoop Loop, 2016 Hall of Famer. Um, <laughs> the Hall of Fame, he was inducted by John Cena which I thought he was going to be inducted by Sasha. I thought that would have been cool, but John Cena's induction speech is amazing. Like, John Cena doesn't come out and say it, but he kind of implies that he um, indulged in the in the, uh, in the the lifestyle that Snoop likes to have. Um, smoking ganja or reefer. Or, you know, it, it, he doesn't come out and say it, but he kind of implies it, and it's a really, really cool induction. I think Cena even busted out uh, a little freestyle to bring out Snoop. But uh, the rest of the Hall of Fame class, we got the Stinger! The Stinger, you guys! Sting is in the Hall of Fame. About fucking time. Uh, inducted by Ric Flair. Sting's speech, I remember being really, really good. I remember he even brought up Joker Sting in his induction speech, and Again, personal preference, Joker Sting is my favorite Sting of all time. I didn't grow up with NWA Sting. I didn't grow up with Surfer Sting, so I don't know as much about him. I've only seen, like, I, I didn't live that. I didn't live that. I've only seen that post, post-Crow post Sting. But Joker Sting is my personal favorite Sting of all time. I love that shit. Um, we have the Godfather. Godfather inducted into the Hall of Fame, inducted by the APA, who will also be inducting Terry Long this year. 
kind of cool because I think they're all traveling buddies, all, all four of those guys. So uh, the APA was really good when they inducted the Godfather. I can't wait to hear the stories about Teddy Long this year. Um, Big Boss Man was inducted this year, inducted by Slick. Very cool to see the Slickster back. Uh, Boss Man unfortunately passed away, but I remember his his wife and daughters gave a really cool indu- uh, acceptance speech. Like, um, oh, they even talked about the the Pepper incident with Al Snow, and. His girls were in high school then, so they had to answer a lot of questions about that. And I just remember finding that to be really, really hilarious. Uh, Jackie, Miss Jackie to some, Jacqueline to others. She was inducted into the Hall of Fame by uh, Bubba Ray and Devon, which I'm surprised Booker T didn't induct her. I'm pretty sure Miss Jackie. I'm pretty sure Jackie was with Booker T in uh, Harlem Heat. I might be, might be totally off on that, but. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I thought they were at least together at some point. But uh, Jackie had a really good induction suites. Really cool to see her get inducted into the Hall of Fame. And um, Wikipedia is telling me she's the first African American woman inducted in the Hall of Fame, which is cool. Uh, should be more. I would say I would still say Jazz. Jazz. If you guys have watched my um, my uh, videos from eighteen to uh, eighteen and nineteen, Jazz kicks ass and is in vastly underrated in her. Uh, role in the women's division, but uh, also Stan Hansen. Stan Hansen inducted this year in the Hall of Fa- uh, last year in the Hall of Fame. Really, really cool. Uh, gave a gave a decent speech. I don't know too much about Stan Hansen, but he he gave a good speech from what I remember. And of course, the fabulous Freebirds, Michael PSAs, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, and um, uh, Buddy Roberts, Jimmy Garvin also inducted. Um, of course. Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts are posthumous. They've unfortunately passed away. But Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin tell some stories, man. Oh, like they tell some stories. Oh, if you haven't watched that induction speech, you need to watch that induction speech. Some stuff I didn't think they'd allow through the censors, but apparently they did. Uh, really, really fun stuff. Uh, we also had the Warrior Award again this year, um, last year. For Joan London, uh, she was uh, she was presented to it by Dana Warrior, big cancer survivor, big woman, a big spokeswoman for Susan G. Komen. So I mean, awesome, awesome for her. Uh, she gave a good speech too. You know, really happy to be there and everything. And uh, also in 2016, they did something a little bit different. I don't know if they're doing this again this year, but um, they did what is called the Legacy Inductees. Basically, what they did was. Um, they took a lot of people that are inducted into the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, and they kind of powered through all of them. Like people that should be in the WWE Hall of Fame that were like in the early part of the 20th century, but never really had a role in the WWF or the WWWF. You know, like so. I'm just gonna run down these names again. I don't know too much about. I I know some stuff about these people, but not too too much. Uh, you had Mildred Burke. Um. Uh, one of the first ever women's wrestlers, basically. She held uh, the first world women's style for 20 years. Frank Gotch, of course. Everyone knows Frank Gotch. Um, uh, George Hackenschmidt, the first ever world heavyweight champion, uh, NWA world champion. Ed Strangler Lewis, uh, big, big name in the NWA. Most of these guys are big names in the NWA or the AWA. Uh, Ed Str- uh, I said Ed Strangler Lewis. Pat O'Connor. Uh, if, if you've ever heard of an O'Connor role, that's who it's named after. Like It's kind of like gymnasts. If you do something really creative, they'll name it after you. Speaking of naming stuff, Luthez, the Luthez Press that we see everyone do now. In fact, I have a funny story about Luthez. Um, uh, I was watching some old Texas wrestling when I worked at WWE, and um, we were watching. I, saw, I got to watch a Luthez match. It's bizarre. It's absolutely bizarre because everyone's dressed all nights in suits at ringside. Like it, it's a, it's a, it's an outing. Um, not a lot of like catches, catch can. Not a lot of punching or anything like that. And uh, Luthez's big move, I saw him do a lot, was a pile driver. Now there was one guy I saw him wrestle. Uh, he went to pull him up like the stump puller pile driver, like Jerry Lawler used to do. But the guy who he was um, wrestling couldn't keep his head between Luthez's legs. And kind of sat up halfway, and Luthez just dropped him. 
right right on his the back of his head and his neck and his shoulders and basically at least everyone i was working with and my managers there we all kind of agreed that that was the first ever power bomb the first ever power bomb was done by luthes so that's uh, at least the first ever one cuz this was back in 1957 so i'm pretty sure that was the first ever power bomb so uh you know a little bit of trivia for you guys and also uh sailor art thomas was billed as um one of the first african american wrestlers and he was he never won the nwa title but he fought for it a lot uh but yeah so that's pretty cool like the legacy inductees i wonder if they're going to do that again this year i have no idea if they're going to i don't know who else they would throw into it but it'd be interesting to see if they do it again all right uh so back to the card at hand we have the second ever hell in a cell match at wrestlemania and you guys uh it's the undertaker versus this man shane o money these actually dropped from the ceiling at wrestlemania 32. how did i get one you ask did i go to this wrestlemania no i didn't go to dallas i would have loved to but i did not i actually won this in a wrestling trivia contest right here in poughkeepsie from two people who did go to wrestlemania so yeah, uh, they dropped a lot of these at ringside uh, during the during the main event. You can see a bunch of them just crumpled up on the floor because they dropped a lot of these things. But it's still kind of cool. Like uh, it says, in Shane we trust has uh, WrestleMania thirty two oh four oh three sixteen. It's got the uh, it's got the um, the date there, like written like currency. So you know it's pretty fun. But ah, uh, this is a fun match, and it's weird looking at this again because. The stipulation was if Shane won, he would gain control of Raw, and the Undertaker would be banned from competing at WrestleMania. If Shane lost, nothing happened? I don't know. But Shane lost, and he ended up controlling Raw for a little bit, and then we had the draft and all that stuff. But um, this match, whew, they, Shane is insane. Shane, Undertaker just beats the shit out of him for the majority of this match. Uh, it's a little too long. It's a, it's over a half hour. A little too long for my taste. Would have liked to see this go to maybe the ladder match or the women's match or something else. Um, but everyone knows what this is remembered for. Shane jumping off the renovated Hell in a Cell. It's still like... I, I just watched Shane on SmackDown. I know he's okay. It is still frightening to watch. It is super frightening to watch. But uh, yeah. It was a good match. It's a good match. Don't get me wrong. Shane's match with AJ Styles is going to be good this year, too. But a little too long. A little too long for my taste. All right. So now moving along, we have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And uh, you know what I'm going to do. Let's go through all of the entrants. And there are some weird ones in here. Fandango, Damian Sandow, Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, that's real. And no, it's not happening this year. Big Show, Victor, Diamond Dallas Page, 2017 Hall of Fame inductee. Connor, Tatanka. Tatanka was there. Why was Tatanka there? I don't know. I hope Tatanka gets in the Hall of Fame eventually. That'd be great. I had dinner with him once. He was a nice guy. Jack Swagger, R-Truth, Goldust, Curtis Axel, Adam Rose. A lot of these guys aren't employed anymore, I don't think. Heath Slater, Tyler Breeze, Mark Henry, Bo Dallas, Darren Young, and Kane. But, of course, the winner is the NXT entrant, Baron freaking Corbin, man. Baron Corbin. Love it. Uh, if you watch, um, again, the WWE 24, you see Baron Corbin leaving his NXT brethren and it's it's kind of sad but you're kind of happy for him because you know he's winning that battle royal and baron corbin he's he's had a good showing he's had a good run so far i mean he's gonna be in there in their continental title match at this year's wrestlemania so that's a bump that's a bump that's a better bump than cesaro got from the battle royal and uh all right and then we get see the rest of the show for me really doesn't work on a lot of different levels. Uh, it kind of kills the crowd. I think I think this show should have ended with the Hell in a Cell for a number of different reasons. One, it ends with the holy shit moment. It ends with 
the fans being happy about who the last person winning a match is. Um, and it's the longest match. Generally, for me, it, if you're going to have the longest match, you should go on last. You, you know, no one throws in an Iron Man match in the middle of a show. You just don't do that. Um, but before we get to the main event, we have The Rock coming out to announce that there was over 101,000 people in Dallas, which is awesome. Uh, we They broke the record from WrestleMania 3, which Lord knows they were trying to do. I'm sure they were probably still a little disappointed with the turnout. I think they were looking for like 110. I don't know if that stadium can hold that many people, but 101,000 is still pretty damn good. Um, but then Bray Wyatt comes out, continuing his streak of important things at Mania's. Continuing his streak of that, and he's in the WWE title match this year. He's the champion. Not bad, Bray Wyatt. Not bad. By the way, when Bray Wyatt comes out, seeing all of those people with their cell phones in that arena with the fireflies, I, I was saying I was saying this as I was watching it. Bray Wyatt has the coolest ambiance in wrestling. He just had like, like because the music, it's it's got a good beat. It kind of reminds you of True Blood a little bit, but it's fine. And everyone, whether or not you're a fan of Bray Wyatt, you can just hold your flash, the flashlight on your phone up for five minutes when he walks down. It's the coolest ambiance you've ever seen. And it's not something that WWE produced. Like, that's the best thing. Like, the Tron for this WrestleMania is relatively small. And you can't even tell the Tron Fireflies that are on there. It's everyone else just participating. And sometimes they, like, get into synchronicity and they move around, stuff like that. It's really, really fun. I love... Uh, I love it. But, um... So Bray Wyatt talks to The Rock a little bit. They have a good little back-and-forth promo. Really dug it, uh, but then, of course, Rock turned Rock and said he wants to have a match, but Bray Wyatt was injured at this point, which is probably better for him in the long run. So The Rock goes up against Eric Rowan. Uh, the Rock strips down. He has his gear on. He throws his elbow pads on. And The Rock beats Eric Rowan in six seconds, which I believe is a WrestleMania record for quickest win ever. I think it'd be SD Jones and King Kong Bundy. But, uh, yeah, and then, you know, the Wyatts are like, oh, okay, well, we don't care about wins and losses. So they're going to go attack The Rock. John Cena comes back way early from injury, and Cena and The Rock take out the Wyatt family. That's it. Um, and then, then we have this, this main event, you guys. This main event. Triple H, WWE Champion, going up against Roman Reigns. Um... I think I've figured something out. Roman Reigns is like Batista in a lot of different ways. A lot of different ways. Uh, he started off as the muscle in, in, in a group. Um, he was okay. People liked him. People liked when he was kind of the punctuation on the end of a long run on sentence from Seth Rollins. Um, but he's not built for long matches. Batista was never built for long matches. Like, if you watch Batista's WrestleMania matches, whenever they go over, let's say, 14 minutes, it starts to get a little dicey. The only exception is The Undertaker, and I don't even think that went too far over 14 minutes. And that's because The Undertaker can pull a good WrestleMania match out of everybody. Notice I didn't say anybody. I said everybody. Um, but this match is 27 minutes. This match is way too long. Uh, it's about 10 minutes too long. It's it's a lot of Triple H. Like This match should have been Roman Reigns comes in, beats the crap out of Triple H, punctuates it. Like There are so many Superman punches in this match. I stopped counting at six. There are so many of them. It, like I don't even understand what the Superman punch does at this point because it clearly doesn't work as like a setup to a finisher or a signature move or anything like that. It's like Dean Ambrose and his uh rebound clothesline. It's the same thing. You you need to it's not if, if John Cena did the five knuckle shuffle five times in every match, you'd hate it more than you do now. Like you can tease it, that's fine, and you can tease the Superman punch, but he should not be hitting five or six Superman punches. That should not be happening. Um 
they they get they have a spear through the barricade. It, it's like it's this match is kind of like if you are playing the WWE video game and you have the difficulty set to hard. Like you have to hit all of these moves just to get a pinfall. That's basically what it is. And it and it, every time Roman hits an offensive mood move, you just hear boos just raining down from everywhere. Uh, so I mean, you know, it is what it is. Roman wins, obviously, after he accidentally speared Stephanie. Um, but yeah, so Roman wins. He gets the title for I think it was the third time at this point. But uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, kind of a lackluster end to Mania. Mania started off hot, but uh, once you have Baron Corbin winning the, the Battle Royal, everything just goes downhill. And the Rock segment lasts way too long, too. It's a lot of talking. It's a lot of talk. It's probably like a 20-minute segment in the middle of, in the middle of WrestleMania, which is not... It, it, it killed the buzz of the crowd. It killed the buzz of the crowd, pretty much. Um, but yeah, so, guys, that's it. That's that's WrestleMania 32. That's the end. Do you know what tomorrow is? Well, tomorrow when when this comes out, WrestleMania 33. It's WrestleMania time, baby. I'm excited. I, I've watched 32 WrestleManias. I'm excited for WrestleMania 33. I don't know if I'm gonna like it, but I'm excited for it. And I think you guys should be excited too. I hope these videos have have been able to help you guys get in the mood for WrestleMania. Um, so if you have any WrestleMania questions at all, feel free, tweet me at MadMike4883, uh, hit us up on Facebook, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, hit us up on Twitter, at Mayhem Show with the hashtag MM, or, uh, hell, if you have any thoughts about any WrestleMania, including 33, email us, goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, we will read them on the air, we will answer any questions you have, we'll, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about as far as WrestleMania goes. So yeah, um so this is for for Mad Mike for for every WrestleMania I've watched uh that that's that's 32 manias of Mike and uh thank you guys very much.